Barca. Leave Messi alone. All in all, it's just a pair of feet and some balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh. so I, I had that. Um, I think Floyd came on you know, my shuffle not too long ago. I was like, oh, I got to remember that. Welcome back to the Footy Fest Show. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Pink Floydin', we messian. We got a lot of messy things to <laughs> to settle. It got really messy got over messy. the last like week. It got messy. So we gotta we, we got some things to talk about. Is it still is it cleaned up or is it still messy? No, it's always messy. You need a mop to clean up what we're about to talk about. We're back on the Footy Fetish Show with the Fetish is real in the Footy Soccer. Thanks for tuning back in with us. I'm making out with the mic. But I got somebody with me, Ocho. Hey, back on the mic. What the mic, Dad? He's back. Pleasure. Thank you, Such sir. a pleasure. Thank you, sir. That was a great intro. Thank I, you. I had to ask before who this was, so I'm really embarrassed. Pink Floyd. Just learned it. So uh, what's the movie called? The Wall. The Wall. I'm going to check it out. It's called The Wall. If you haven't watched it, Booty highly recommends it. Pink Floyd, uh, one of my favorite bands. But uh, they're they're my favorite because well they're not my absolute favorite but they're in the top five because they're absolutely just fucking weird. Yeah, that's that's makes um, a good artist. They, something unusual, something weird. They they used to trip out on some things uh, a little too hard, and uh, some of their albums are just complete trash. Oh, and my, well, you can't hit a home run every time. Yeah, I know? mean they're kind of whacked out so hard on um, I don't know what we call it. Um, Hmm. Drugs, mind beers, um, <laughs> nose beers. <laughs> yeah, nose beers, mind nose beers, beers, mind beers. Uh, some of them are just like a bunch of noise, and you're just like, yeah, y'all were go back to the studio, please, a little more yeah, sober, need to detox a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> let's try again. And when speaking they of trying try again, again, what you got? I think Barca wishes they could try again with Messi. Oh God, <laughs> we just jump right into it. Let's jump right. This is so. This Fuck is what we've been doing, man. I've, I've been telling people this is the probably the most notorious news in soccer for the last decade if not the last two decades if not the last half a year i mean a uh, half a century what news is that messi will not be re-signing with barcelona and if you haven't heard this news you've been living under a rock because we've even seen the lakers photoshop messi in a lakers jersey saying that they're going <laughs> to sign messi we've seen the new orleans saints Yep. Photoshop Messi in a Saints jersey. Yep. Saying what position are we going to sign him to? Yep. Because Messi is officially a free agent right yeah. now. Yep. He is under no contract. What are your thoughts on this? Um so many questions obviously. First one that comes to mind. Wow. Okay, well first of all, so front office fucked up big time. This is uh, Tom been, New Orleans homies out there. I think Dell Demps is running the front office over at Barca. <laughs> like no questions asked. <laughs> there, what the fuck is going on? We know what's going on. How do you? First question. How do you not at least get something back for him? You you're not gonna. We uh, said this last summer. Yeah, we dude. said this last summer. Yes, they're gonna regret it. They're gonna let him go for free. Yes, and they're not gonna get anything for it. Yes. You know what? All these Barcelona fans are feeling with what I feel right now with Donnarumma. All these Barcelona fans are about to be fans of somebody else. Ooh. We'll get to that in a second. Ooh. But isn't it weird that that happens, right? And, and, hey, there's a lot of fucking rumors out there, so we don't we don't really know exactly how Messi handled this, but the way it's portrayed. We know a lot. The way, yeah, the, what we know and the way it was portrayed, it almost seems like, was it kind of his fault too? Doing this to them because he could have said, "Hey, I'm not planning on coming back here." What six months ago, they could have got something for him. So I'm gonna say not Messi's fault because even if Messi agreed to a five mil a year contract, yeah, Barcelona lost last year. They were at a deficit of $465 million. From dumb front office moves? Dumb front office moves. The pandemic also hurt because you know they're relying on ticket sales. Mm-hmm. Uh, the marketing, they probably were looking forward to some marketing deals. All of that stuff that they were depending on to help pay for Messi disappeared. And I guess you could say all the stars aligned, but we saw this coming. Barcelona has notoriously always been in debt. 
They've always been in debt. And when you when you spend 100 mil on Coutinho, when you spend 100 mil on Dembele, when you spend 100 mil on Griezmann, and you have nothing to show for it, it's going to catch up to you. Yeah. Because those are just the transfer fees. That doesn't even include the wages right. of those three players. It's so easy to forget about the other side of things. I do it all the time. Yeah. If you can tell you. He'll be like, well, free transfer. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, but they still – how much is Griezmann making a week we to, do to do nothing? To do nothing. I don't – I don't – I'm do not – Do a whole lot of nothing. I want to look this up, but not right now. But, but yeah, yeah. It's a I'm great point. Out there as Let's a just take a guess. Let's just take a guess. You think it's 20 mil a year? I think he's 25, 30? I think he's definitely making 100 grand a week. What do you think? 100 grand a week times 52, so like 5.2 mil. Something stupid? Yeah. Something stupid, and he's not even. I think 5.2 mil is a little low. It might, yeah, we might even I be wrong. I think he's at like that. 10 to 20, to be honest. That's so, that's so crazy, dude. You know what? Can I throw this out there? Throw this it. Same, there's so many, you know, obviously our wheels are turning right now. Here's something that could have saved it. Because I was looking at a guy named Luis Suarez. Mm. I was looking at his Instagram earlier, and he mm. was very happy to see Messi moving on, obviously. We, we posted it to the fetish on the Instagram. Yeah. Um, you know, he he would have stayed for cheap, but they, they immediately Said shoved him old. out of the door. Yeah. So you shoved out of the door your main, your, your god of Barcelona, his best friend. You shoved him out of the door, and you could have re-signed him for absolutely nothing. Pennies. Pennies, yeah, because uh, Atletico did right. Uh, so that I think that was the beginning Ooh. of this little domino effect. Ooh, to be honest, the fact like, that they couldn't re-sign Suarez. If you think about it, and they said, "Oh, he's too old," and he's they didn't want to like draw attention to it. And Coman, That's a you know, great theory. Coman was like, "He's not going to fit in here." Well, fuck, dude. Let's also keep in mind all of the free transfers they picked up this summer. Yeah, dude. Aguero. Aguero. Um, they were going after Wijnaldum. That didn't work. I think he's at PSG, PSG, but he was a free transfer. And we'll get to that in a second. That's right. PSG. Keep that in your brains. Yep. Uh, just to go back to this whole messy thing, it's crazy because right now Barcelona are going, yeah, we, we had a contract and Messi agreed to it, and Messi really wanted to be here, and they're making La Liga look like the enemy. It's like, you guys knew exactly what your books were showing. You knew the rules that La Liga had set out. You knew this wasn't going to happen. They constantly keep trying to deflect blame yeah. on everybody else, go back to Super League, everything. I had to, I had to argue with one of my coaching buddies because he, he texted me and said, oh, fuck La Liga. And I went, excuse me? Mm, no. I was like, this has been on Barcelona. They've been making stupid decisions financially for years. They knew this was coming a year ago. And you know what's interesting is if you look back in history to all of the Brazilians – that have gone through Barcelona, they all have negative things to say about how they have been treated. And it makes you wonder. I mean, Messi, I think, is a unique player for Barcelona's history. They probably bow down to him. But if we're looking at past behaviors of Barcelona, they've been treated. They've treated, we saw what they did to Suarez. Yeah. Right? They've treated players pretty poorly on the way out. They're a what what have you done for me lately? Exactly. Kind of team. That's well said. And it's uh it's sad because to solve all these problems, let's go back to the Suarez thing for a second. What was that, a year ago? Yeah, last okay, year. Okay, so Messi's contract had one year left on it. Mm-hmm. That's when you re sign both of them. Mm-hmm. You get them in the same fucking room. Well, so let's know? let's remember what happened last year it was that whole presidential debacle. Yeah. Right? He true. he was the one that Messi was like, I'm not talking to that dude. You get that dude out of there, we'll, we'll talk about me re-signing. Because last summer, he was like, I'm not re-signing. Yep. I want to fucking go. Yep. And Barcelona was like, we're not going to let you go. And there was that whole like 700 mil release clause if yeah. anybody wanted to. And Messi was like, that. oh, yeah. fuck, I got to stay here. Forgot about that, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the fact that that was his, his instinct, his impulse reaction, we all kind of knew that he knew he was on the way out. Yep. And and I think he and his PR team were like, let's say that we were like, we wanted to go with Barcelona. <laughs> but, you know, in all honesty, they knew. Uh, they yeah. knew because La Liga was like, look, these are the rules. We've got financial fair play. We've now got a salary or a wage cap, whatever they're calling it. Barca knew damn well that they – we knew this going into the summer, actually. Because I remember I texted a buddy. I almost yep. want to pull up this text saying that Barcelona had to shed – 200 million in cap space. And what did they do? Nothing. Nothing. You know what they did try to do? And we talked about this on the previous episode. They tried to offload Griezmann. 
for at Atletico Madrid. Yeah, it's Atletico. Yeah, right. They tried to offload his wages. Didn't work. And it, it would have been a swap too. So see, that's where you need to just straight up sell the guy. Yeah. And get get big cash back. Well, they were going to lose on that because they paid like 120 mil. Right. You're going to have to sell him for 60. So you're already 60 in the hole again. I, I would hope that they were trying to do that. <sighs> they and we just won't ever up, know. Man. They made but so many bad decisions. You know what they were trying to do? Barcelona diehard said this best. They've been trying to replace Neymar. Yeah. For three these three signings, Coutinho they tried, Dembele they tried, and Griezmann they tried, and they failed all three of them to get a player like Neymar that complements Messi. But you know what made Neymar and Messi work so well? The the S in MSN. Suarez. Without Suarez. It's nothing. It's it's not as effective because Suarez is a great number nine. He's a finisher. You know? He's a finisher. He's a finisher. And that's where I think Aguero was going to – Messi saw Aguero and was like, this is going to be good for me because it's now someone that I, that I can pass to that, that can score. Right. Who was that guy before? I couldn't tell you the number nine. Uh, so an, I mean, they forced Griezmann in there. That was pretty fail. They had Braithwaite. Yeah, but Braithwaite. he's not – He's not elite. He's not a clinical finisher. And then they try to force another one. Uh, let's talk about another one. You know, the swap deal, uh, Pjanic yeah, for our tour. Where, which, I mean, been? it really hasn't worked out for both sides. Neither. Yet. Yeah, neither. Um, which, I don't know if you know this, but a uh, little, little uh, Juve, a little tidbit. They're yeah. actually trying to uh, – uh, Allegri <laughs> wants Pjanic back. Oh, shit. Yeah, and he's actually considered – like, apparently Pjanic is down with it. Because he's, I mean, who wants to be there? With yeah, all he did shit? well under Allegri. Yep. He Allegri, f- man, I'm excited. I know. I think, I know. I, honestly, Me we too. were talking about top two. Uh, like, is Juve going to get top two? I think Inter are going to struggle. Yeah, now they are. Yeah, I, I want to change Inter that. Inter are going to yeah. struggle. They lost Hakimi. Uh, and let's, let's move on over to Inter. We'll talk about where we think Messi will go in a second. But speaking of rumors, there's a rumor Lukaku is on his way out to Chelsea. Yeah. The latest was 100 to 120 mil, and the Inter Ultras uh, posted a big banner, and it was like, you better watch your back if you sell Lukaku, because you told us you wouldn't. You promised that you wouldn't sell Lukaku. (laughs) Yeah, they're not very happy. Uh, They're not happy, but if you're an Inter fan, Booty, all right, and you sell Lukaku, and all of a sudden the board comes out and goes, with this Lukaku money, we want to buy Messi. Are you happy as an Inter fan, or are you still like, we want Lukaku? Who would you rather? Uh, Lukaku only because Inter already has a great midfield. Ah. You see Messi is more of a midfielder. Than yeah. Like a, yeah. That's a good yeah. point. What about Lautaro and Messi together? Now, I was going to – yeah. Yeah. Good point. We're I dabbing think I it. would like that. Um, I don't know, though. I'm with you. I really – I think I would rather Lukaku just because he has shined so well, so bright. And, and we know there's been Syria. times where, yeah, we know there's been times too with, with, with Martinez where he's he's hot or cold. Right, very so, hot or cold. Like, you know, beginning of the year, I want to say, last year, we were hot. We were, we were hot. For Inter, yeah. And then Lukaku kind of took over. Those two worked really well up top together. You know, another piece to that puzzle, Conte, and he's gone. Yeah, but see, if you had, if you had Martinez and, dude, you could – there's there's cheap strikers out there you could get. Oh yeah, that could you form that Compliment. little triangle yeah. with Messi behind him. With those, dude. Woo. Woo. Now hey, we don't know what Inzaghi wants to do. That's right. With the formation because we just we you know Conte. Hey, we know everybody. Three, it's, it's everybody's guess. Every, what Conte wants to do. No, we know what Conte. Three, you know? We know exactly. He starts in the back line. What's he gonna do? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's a three man. Three back man line. back line. After that, then it's like ah, then I don't know. Five man midfield could and be then a four man. Know. Could be a five man. But yeah, you're right. After the three man back line, it's like uh, man's Conte, crazy. What you doing? Man's crazy. I yeah. love it though. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So I mean, I, at this point in time, if you ask me, I'm going to take Lukaku. Yeah. Only because that's you. it's more what they need. Yeah. Um, it's well, f- it, they just won the league with him, and they just won the league with him. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if I'm not mistaken, did he get no Ronaldo got golden boot? That's right. But Lukaku is damn close. There's a there's a word there's an Italian word for the golden boot, and I wish I could remember it. It's like calcio calcio campione or something like that, which means like the best striker. Yeah. I wish I I wish I could remember it off the top of my top. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's like calcio something. In American terms, it's a football champion, <laughs> soccer champion. <laughs> you kick really good. Soccer champion, you kick them balls really hard. You kick balls really good, really hard. Yeah, I think uh, Inter shouldn't shy away. F- I don't think Inter finish in the top two. 
Yeah, now I don't. Coaching change. Yeah. They lost Hakimi. The, just the rumors of Lukaku leaving, I think, shakes a locker room. Erickson is – he was on the training ground, so – We heard about that rule, right? No. With uh, with Serie with the defibrillator? No. Def- defibrillator? I can't ever defibrillator. say that. Defibrillator. 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 It's <laughs> a good drunk word to say in front of a cop, right? Hi, <laughs> guys, defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently uh, it's a rule, Serie if you have any kind of like artificial like heart valve or – or, you know, uh, artificial, like, pacemaker or anything like that, you cannot play Ooh. in Serie A, um, which he's going to probably need mm. uh, unless he potentially wants to die on us again. I don't uh, know. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. you got to think his family's asking him not to do this. Yeah, if but you've got some kind of artificial heart, you should not be playing soccer, period. Correct. Not even like Serie A, just because... You're going to run 90 minutes? Well, they've got a defibrillator on the week? side. You can imagine if they go to restart your heart, there's a fake heart there's in you. There's a fake heart. It, they might blow it up. Right. <laughs> Serie A doesn't want to be responsible for you no, to fucking no. die. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's, I think it's a legit rule. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll see, what, like, where that goes. Uh, but I was, I was reading that, I think on our friends, like, Italian football TV. Yeah. We're saying that, that it's... Apparently that that's a Serie A thing. It's like a deep dark Serie A thing nobody knows about. Hmm. You can't you can't have like some sort of artificial heart. I think it's a great idea. It fucking makes sense. Let's please not see this guy die again on yeah. us. Yeah. Like no all joking aside. I don't I don't want to see this dude. That that was terrible. Right. That was terrible. So Jeez. And hey, I get it. It's hard to give up soccer, man. If you cut my foot off, I'd be depressed. I'd probably it would take me a while. It'd yeah. take me a while. Yeah, so well, what's really cool is that he was back in training. I don't know if he actually trained, but to go back into issues with Inter, they're losing him. Exactly. So, so, and they have Inzaghi, so they're going to have a new system. Right. I don't think Inter are as strong as they were last year. Oh, yeah. I totally want to change my, uh, my view now because Allegri's not fucking around either. No, well, I mean, dude. not that he ever is. So... He's yeah. he's got such a strong team. Everyone knows Juve is the strongest team in Serie A, and a lot of the guys that are there right now are because of him. Allegri. So, yeah. and he's going to bring back Dybala. That's my hot take for oh, that episode. Oh man, I am so I'm excited telling for you, that, bro. Dude. I think I think a lot of that. So excited. I think a lot of Dybala. Right, like he had a lot of injuries. Sure, and I actually saw. Um, I think it was against Milan. Actually, at one point they tried to rush him. No, it was against Lyon. Ah. Um, Champions League last uh, time, they tried to rush him back in, and and he re-injured whatever damn. the problem oh, was. Oh, I did remember that. He remember had like a little good little spurt, and then he injured himself, and you're like, Ugh. he he wants I he wants to be there. He does. Juve wants him to be there. Allegri wants him to be there, and I think before Allegri, uh, you know, Sarri's ass and Pirlo, both of them were on the fence with him. Right. And yep. the the on the fence is now out of out of the picture. So and he's had almost a year almost if you think about it to really recover. So Yep. Uh, you know one thing I fun. really like that Allegri said that gives you a ton of confidence in Dybala is when asked about the captaincy. Yes. He said Dybala is number two. Yep. Absolutely. That for me, if I'm Dybala, if I'm a fan of Juve, I'm like yes. fuck yeah. That's what we've been wanting to hear from our coaches because Dybala has been here the longest. Besides Chiellini. If Buffon was there, obviously Buffon gets the captaincy, but he's off to Parma. Yep. Uh, it was funny. Um, I don't know if you saw the quote from Buffon. He said something like, um, my parents, uh, me being back at Parma is like my parents bugging me to go finish my last year of college. <laughs> and he's like, I'm finally back. This is my last year in college, and then I'm going to you know, get my, my uh, degree in you know, retire or like graduate, quote unquote. So, I mean, your masters again? You mean? Yeah. Like, right. man, I, I'm gonna miss him for sure. Yeah. Even just, just, just being there in his presence, I'm, I'll miss him for sure. He's, You'll see. He'll be back. He'll be back in Juve. Yeah, right? I think with he will. Parma. No, I meant like playing against Juve at, as the Parma goalkeeper. It's true. He'll be back. He'll get a standing ovation, man. I Holy. Think, shit. I think he'll get some kind of front office job eventually with Juve. That'd be really fun. Uh, oh man! Because he's just he's just a guy that uh, he'll be like a he's Maldini. A, he's, a, he's a personable yes person, and he's a legend. You know what's great yeah. about having Maldini in the front office is every one of these players right now that's trying to be a professional soccer player they know about Maldini. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, and and all like, of a sudden their agent, goes, their agent goes, <laughs> their agent goes, their agent goes. Maldini wants to go get lunch with you, and and like, what? can you imagine just being like, 
Uh, fucking tell him yeah. Yeah. yeah like, imagine uh, John Luigi Buffon uh, just said he wants to go meet up with you. It's like, fuck yeah. Yes. Like, set that up. We were going to go to lunch, but he blocked it. You know, we were, we were trying to go to dinner. He I went to go pay the bill, and he blocked. He, he blocked, blocked my it. credit card. And I was like, "Man, what the <laughs> fuck?" It's like Uve's got this, and it, I I'll think be, that's I'll miss bound him. to happen for sure. Um, I could see that happening after the World Cup, actually. Yeah, and and also, I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, and I like I like that too. I like yeah. that. Let the World Cup come come and go. That's about a year. I mean, he's not gonna be at Parma forever. He claims he wants to do it for another <laughs> three, four years, which hey, I think he can. Right. Um, but. Going back to Allegri for a minute, man, and the whole Dybala situation, he just knows the right things to say. Yeah. Because think about it. And he's been that way since we've had him, right? Since Milan. He, he, yes, dude. He, he knows now. people are on the fence, and he's just like, he's my number two captain. You, you, like you said, like you already know. Like You hear that, your ears perk up. And yeah. You're like, oh, the old man's in front of me. That's, that's all I got. I got Chiellini in front of me. So I know I'd be the captain if you know, and get and you know what's going to happen, right? Keelini's going to get hurt, of course, which means soon. they need to move the the captain's armband to to who? Dybala. And then we go Benucci and uh, Delict in the back. I think Delict's ready to go. The Delict's ready to go. That was such a great buy. The it was a little backs pricey, be better. But yeah, the outside backs are an issue. Yeah. Um, I miss Sandro actually. Sandro used to fucking push the ball up, and I miss. Do you remember Licksteiner? Oh, I miss that. What dude. about um, uh, Asamoah? Asamoah, dog. Remember, I picked him up on fantasy. That's right. So I'll yeah, select when he's an inter. Yeah, he's oh, not. He's shit. never done. Because you can you can put him in midfield. Yeah, you can put him whatever. You can, yeah, Dude, Okay, we got off on that. We did. Where's um, Messi going, Q? Okay, so there's obviously for me there's one obvious one, PSG. Right. But if I'm throwing hot takes out in the air, Inter. Yeah. Okay. You sell Lukaku. We just talked about this. If you sell Lukaku. Do you get messy? I think hell yeah you do. What are you crazy? Do you know the oldest rivalry in Syria? Do you know what it is? It's Juve and Inter. Juve and Inter. So why not we have? Why not do that? Why Ronaldo, not create Messi? Il Clasico again, right? Give a little of fl- uh, Italian flair instead of El Clasico. Yes. Il Il Clasico with an I. It'd be fun, dude. Oh, I would love it. I want to see that too. I want to see it. But wait, we already know who already reached out. PSG, yeah, so that's right. Go ahead. What Talk a poof move. What a poof move. Hey, man, that. I love it. I'm here for it. I, you know, I will, uh, I'm going to give Hugh credit because he, he said he was going to leave. I was a guy I was thinking he was going to stay because he would be too much of a pussy to try EPL. He he was a pussy. He didn't want to leave. He right? didn't want to leave. He, I you gotta. I'll take that cred. The only yeah. other credit I'm going to give myself, as I said, the only other two options that, that could afford him would be uh, City or PSG. Mm-hmm. Uh, PSG actually, per ESPN, uh, reached out to his people because he don't even show up for his $100 million conversation. Which, man, I got to get to that point one day. Jorge. Yeah, I got to get to that point one day. That'd be nice. Uh, so they talked to his people. They offered him a three year deal. Um, Can't wait to see those figures. I want to see the figures. Holy they, yeah. fuck. Notice they haven't set them yet. Right. <laughs> They're not going to yet. No one's gonna. So you know they like wrote it down and like mailed it over there and was like, "We're not gonna leave any trace of this." How about two? But dude, if this happens, can I run through this really yeah, quick? Go for it. I got you. I got. I got you on something. All right. Do do do. So let me talk while you're pulling that up. All right. So PSG. Let's just think about who's there. Yep. Pochettino. Yep. You want to know what his nationality is? Argentinian. Argentinian. Okay. Let's let's keep going. Di Maria. Argentinian. Paredes. Argentina. There's a lot of, yeah. One more. Icardi. Icardi. Argentina. Yep. So right now he's got four Argentinians. Oh, he's got his old pal Neymar, who's also from South America. South America. Uh, and then apparently Verratti has been partying. He loves the South American culture. He loves to party. There was a photo with Messi, Neymar, Paredes, Di Maria, and Verratti. Recently posted on Neymar's page, his Instagram page. You got to think Verratti is like... Fuck yeah, we're getting messy. And Verratti looking up to those six foot motherfuckers. Or All five I can eight say, motherfuckers, because Verratti's like four eight. <laughs> Messi and Verratti are probably seeing eye to eye. Him and Insignia <laughs> are like the shortest motherfuckers I've ever seen. But they ball. I don't want to cover them, but you yeah. know. One more thing I gotta say. Go ahead. Um, and I got it whenever you. Neymar done. has been busting his ass to try and create chances for other teammates. Now it's gonna be Messi creating for Neymar. 
and Neymar is going to finally be able to just get shots in on goal. Oh, and hey, hadn't I, those two been together before somewhere? Yeah, where were they? Oh, yeah. Uh, and didn't they beat someone in a Champions League? I got <laughs> to give Neymar credit, dude, because oh, think man. about it. He got the big-ass fucking deal, yep. right? Got the big-ass fucking transfer money. Uh, and then, he, you know, he, he did pretty well, like, you know, domestic league and Champions League kind of, like, faltered a couple times, yep. injuries here and there, and he waited it out he, <laughs> to have Messi come to him. <laughs> Messi came to him. So how crazy is that? Oh, my God. And let me run down something real quick. This is what I yeah, pull good, up. good, good. Pull it up. Is this the greatest tra- uh, transfer window in history for Could PSG? Be. If if this if Ooh. this Messi deal goes down, Ooh, let me fuck. run through some oh shit real quick. Oh, my God. I'm not even thinking about this. Leo Messi on the free. Sergio Ramos on the free. Oh. Gigi Dinorama on the free. Oh. Wijnaldum on the free. Oh. The only person that they've spent money on Hakimi. is Hakimi. $54 million. Oh, and gee, it's 54, more than that, right? $54 million transfer fee. Ah, okay. But, yeah, God knows what contract they offered him. I think it was but around 70 or 80. That's still fucking pennies yeah. to PSG. Jeez. Um, shout out to PSG. Um, Do, here's the real question. Do they hold on to Mbappe? That is something I actually wanted to get into. I'm very glad you brought it up. Let's talk about it. Because we, we, we used to. That was a great th- point, by the way. All those free transfers. This is probably the best window we've ever oh, seen. Oh, dude. I, great point. I didn't even think of that. I, I appreciate the love, but there's so many, so many directions points. we're going. It's <laughs> so okay. Many, let's it's okay. I, I didn't take it personally. <laughs> this, dude, this, how, how crazy is this shit now, right? Yeah. This is something else I want to bring up. Because the domino effect that we thought, I thought it was going to be the other way around. Right. I thought, I thought Mbappe would leave. Yeah. Then and then Ronaldo Messi. or oh. Messi would come God. through, right? <sighs> but Whew. if this happens, Whew. I've read some things. Oh, it's would you read? straight rumors right now? Yeah. It isn't per ESPN okay. or, right. or Fabri- Fabrizio? Yeah, Fabrizio, yet, tier right? two, tier two. <laughs> this dude, this dude, <laughs> Real Madrid. Yeah, they're go- They want to go after this yeah, dude. They want now that we know if that. the Messi signing goes down, they want to go after him. Mm. It's funny because it's always that thing that I always bitch about. It's like, yeah, but did you ever ask the guy if he wanted to fucking leave in the first place? Right, like, right. So is Messi going to now force him out? Because now I feel like every it's, it's just like crowded. Mm. Right? You just got one of them who maybe would play where Messi's at. No, no, no. Center attacking mid. Center attacking mid? Pochettino does that 4-3-3. He, 4-3-3. Yeah. So then you'd have. 4 2 3 well, one, four, three, three. Messi at the, the false nine? I'd put Messi on the right wing. On the right wing, and see when you when you do that four two three one so Neymar on the left. So where does Mbappe go? Center forward. Center forward. Yeah. Here's All the right. thing: Di Maria gets pushed out. Right. You can't push out Di Maria. You can't do it. Damn. Yep. Somebody's got to go. Here's the thing: if you're Mbappe, I'm if I'm Mbappe, right? And all of a sudden I find out that Messi is on the way. Do I want to leave? No. I don't want to leave. I don't think I do. I want to sign a contract. Because I can be injured like I always am and just kind of chill on the big games, and Messi can win me a fucking Champions League. And Messi and Neymar. And my price tag will go up for some reason. It's going to be Messi Neymar. I'm yeah, calling it. Yeah. Here's another thing. They have a Cardi, too. The it, depth up front. Do they still have Keen? I was I was Keen speak, there? Speaking of guys that I would just turn down every transfer coming my way and just chill on the bench in the warm-ups. Seriously. The Cardi. Yeah. Juve has been trying for him for a minute. Here's another big question for you. Yeah. Right, look into the future. Does Messi get PSG over the hump and win them a Champions League trophy? I don't think so. Really? Yeah. I think he does. Yeah. If he's I, healthy throughout the knockout rounds, PSG win. I think um, PSG is a mental thing now. Ooh. Because they seem to not be able to win their domestic cup. And they well, seem to get. One year. One year. Settle down. Last year. I'll give it to you. Two One years point. in a row, right? No, no, no. They won the previous year. Okay. Let me, I mean, I'll, let me check, but keep going. I, I they, feel they like they, they, they have trouble domestically, right? Because they didn't. Tuchel? I'm pretty sure Tuchel won it. Tuchel won it, but they they just didn't win their easy-ass league. Last year they lost to Lille by one point. I'll they almost didn't make Champions League. Oh, they finished third. France is like, no. They France only second. gets three spots. They finished second. They finished second. They finished second? I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. PSG second. Okay. But it was a one point was, second place. Was, yeah, they had some trouble, right? I feel like they're in their own heads. Yeah. And uh, I don't. Oh, yeah, the COVID league. Remember the, during the pandemic, they yeah. just stopped it. PSG was up. They're like, all that's right, you right. Got it. they fucking yeah. gave it to them. That's a, that's a joke, too. 
That's a fucking joke. That's a poof joke. <laughs> that's poof, man. That's poof. That's all poof right, shit. So go back to the mental thing. With uh, I, I think it's all in their head, and I think it's all up to Pochettino, which I think Pochettino, if, if, if there's any coach out there that can get you out of it, I think he's I'd, – I'd take him. Yep. I'd give it a shot. Uh, but also, we're sitting here talking about where does everybody go. So if, if Mbappe doesn't move, you have this crowded, crowded. 4-3-3. I think a much more disciplined team that is just on a roll, and that's what Champions League always is, I think can beat that. I really do. If you got Mbappe on an injury like he always is in a big fucking game, if you got Neymar on vacation, you know, it, it, there's all these fucking – there's too many distractions yeah. and factors with PSG. And, hey, I'm not saying they're not capable of it. They certainly are. On paper they We've are. We've seen it the last yeah. two years, but – we keep seeing the last few years that it just, it's one thing after the other with stupid bullshit. One they thing, should have lost to Atalanta. If ooh, they really want to go they, crazy. Yeah, they really should have. They one, got lucky with your boy that they sold. It's no longer there. Chelpa Motin. Yeah. With the fucking 90th minute tying goal and then another one, what, two minutes later? Mm-hmm. So, to add on to that. Too much. Um, I'm going to piggyback on what you're saying. The teams that have success – have consistency in their formations and their lineups and their play style. Consistency, focus. They and don't when you, have focus. And when you exactly when you have a team with yep. Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, Di Maria, Icardi, Wijnaldum, you're going to be constantly rotating. Yeah. And some games against an inexperienced team that might work, but when you go up against a Bayern or you go up against a Man City yep. or a proven and tried consistent team. Man City's kind of a fluke because Pep's always changing things, but yep. when you go up against a team that has the same lineup and the same play style, they tweak a few things, it's going to be hard to latch on to that identity late in the game because yep. you have no identity because you've been changing so many see, times. Yeah. You know what's a great example of this? Juventus. They got very lucky this last year. Pirlo had a different lineup every That's single game yep. the entire season. Yep. And they got lucky because they have a great goal scorer in Cristiano Ronaldo, and they had Chiesa, who was just individually special. On fire all just year. Just on fire. But we've seen where that does not work yep. in longevity. Yep. So I'm totally in agreement with you. If Pochettino can't find that starting that starting 11. And stay with it. And stick with it and have his – and this is what Zidane did. i got to credit Zidane. Zidane did this with that Real Madrid team. Same starting eleven, Cristiano, Benzema, Bale, Cruz, Modric, Casemiro. Same back four. And what he would do is he had a five-man rotation. And around the 60-70th minute, he would always rotate yep. in the same five players. You see fucking Jaimez come in every now and then. No, not the even Jaimez. He had given up on it was uh who uh, um, uh, the Croatian that's at Chelsea right now. Give me a second. Center mid, uh, young dude, son of a bitch. I can't remember his name. You had uh, Vasquez, Lucas Vasquez. Asensio was rotating in. Asensio. Um, Nacho was always rotating in. Nacho. It's not Krunic. He didn't, he didn't um, fuck with Militao until uh, later. Kovacic. Kovacic. Kovacic yeah. was always rotating in for either Casemiro, Cruz, or Modric. Yep. He was that center mid rotation. Did a great job. Fresh midfield leagues. And then you had yep. uh, Asensio, who was either rotating in for Cristiano or Bale. Same thing with Vasquez, Cristiano or Bale. And then I forget who was rotating in for Benzema, but he had these same five rotations. Yep. And it just the starting 11 plus your five on the bench was consistent all year long. Yeah. Three trophies in a yeah. row. Yeah. So I love what you said there. The mentality, the identity, the focus, the discipline. If Pochettino can do it, asterisk, Champions League. But and, I don't think he'll do it. And, you know, I'm proud of you because the very first team that you thought of and said – when we thought about same lineup, mentality, focus, Byron. Byron. Look at that lineup. It's Ooh. not sexy at all. No. I wouldn't fuck it. It's a fat girl <laughs> at a bar that's really, really trying hard. One fifty eight PM or AM. You're when the look- hot girl PSG yeah. is really talking to you hard, right? Like But you know you right. can't close. Oh oh Nabry. Like, come on, man. I love Nabry. I think he's a fucking fantastic player. It's not the first player that comes to mind nope. when I'm thinking sexy right at all. Right winger? Nope. Definitely at not. all. Not like a, that not whole at all. fucking midfield. Davies. Davies. He doesn't even start. Doesn't even it's start Lucas anymore. It's Lucas Hernandez. Doesn't even start anymore. Yeah. Like, it's that's the first team that came to my mind. 
So, shout out to Bundesliga. But speaking of which, the coach they're fucking focused, dude. They have a new coach. We don't know what's going to happen. Exa- actually. Exactly. Exactly. So I will say, Hansi Flick, Bayern. We knew exactly what we, we knew, were getting. We knew we were fucking getting, dude. This one, Nagelsmann. We've seen Nagelsmann fuck around with Leipzig. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen. I really would have liked to see our Dakery boy get that fucking job from uh, from <laughs> Dortmund, which uh, Terzic or whatever. Which Pun Daddy told me they opened up an entire like they gave him an entirely new position because they didn't want to get rid of him. No shit. Remember he was interim coach. They won a domestic cup. They won the Polka. Ah, uh, right. Right. He did. He won that. So they were like, oh shit. And You're he's really so valuable by the players. Yeah. So he's like. The assistant to the vice president of like player relations. They're still paying him, in other words. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you know, I'm a big Red Sox fan. Yeah. Like there's, uh, there's numbers that are retired for the Sox, right? Uh-huh. One of the numbers that's retired is Carlton Fisk. Hmm? Carlton Fisk. Um, the the rules for Red Sox retirement, right? You yeah. have to have played for them for at least ten years. You have to have been a front office position. Blah blah blah. blah. Carlton Fisk played for them forever, but was not interested in the fucking front office position like at all. So they just made a fucking position. He's like, he's the assistant to the uh, to the owner of the owner. And, yep, we're retiring 27 today. And 27. <laughs> we're t- it's kind of like that. Yeah. You know, it's, um, but I love it because I really hope that it is really a real position because that guy had passion. Yeah. He had a flat bill. Success. Like, he was ready to fucking Jersey Shore some motherfuckers <laughs> and, like, Metairie Daiquiri. Shout out to Metairie Marv. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I liked him a lot. I really wanted to see him get something. There's got to be a, bigger position in his future for sure i uh, think so I, I tell you what just going back to this the success or failure of psg if messi does not win a champions league i think that's a a negative tick mark on his legacy oh yeah because he's going to a lesser league Lesser right? league, better players around you better players around him for sure we've seen yeah. barcelona fuck up in Champions League, hundred ten percent, eight to two, right? And then the last one, who smacked the shit out of him recently? I don't even remember who it was. Yeah, it, it's it's it was happening so, forgettable. so often it was too. So forgettable. It's happening so often. I I think they won their domestic cup. That they won the Copa del Rey. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's, that's a joke. It's like Arsenal winning the FA Cup. It's right, like, right, right. It, cool, it, yeah, cool. That's your thing. Yeah. Here, here it is. Actually, Welcome I thought back. someone else knocked. Barcelona. They won a cup. They won something. I think it was that. They won. A I remember Griezmann holding it up, acting like he did some shit, <laughs> but he didn't. Like, let's be real. Hot take. I think Barcelona actually go farther than PSG. Oh yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. With if Messi goes to PSG, because now the pressure's off. Yeah, the pressure's off of him. And you you just signed think Depay and fucking Aguero. Yeah, so I mean, think about the players you got. Like, dude, I Aguero, hey. Depay, Griezmann. You still got Coutinho. You still got Dembele. You got De Jong. Um, they I know they they got Pedri, who's just lighting it up right Put now. Put fucking De Jong where Messi was. Let's whoa, rock, dude. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait, what position are you talking about? <laughs> oh man, I, I think. Oh no, wait, they had Busquets. At that center mid, yeah. I'm putting I'm putting Busquets as like keep, yeah. I keep mean, uh, there. De Jong there, De Jong and Busquets. Yeah. Okay, my bad. PK yeah. is still there. The, the the number nine. I mean, I guess you put Depay, yeah. Depay or Aguero, either one. Aguero. I think you put Aguero. Depay so wishy washy. Although, see, here's the thing. Uh, last 10, 20 years, it's always been four three 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 four three yeah, play through messi it up, dude it's not messi working obviously is not there right you don't have to play through him you don't have to play that rigid four three three you wide Coleman, open. i think is gonna play to his players yeah he's gonna see okay these are the players i've got i've got a depai i've got an aguero i've got a griezmann yeah what is the best formation that complements all of them let it run let it run but also, is he getting pressure? I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him from the front office to do what they want. Sure, like of they course. They have that agenda, yeah. you know because what I mean? Because Barcelona have had so much success, you know? So, can it's he, like Man U almost. Can he have the balls to yes. tell them no and it work? You saw what he said to Messi, right? When the whole mm. last summer? I'm pretty sure he told Messi, he was like, I don't care if you're here or not. Oh, like just straight up said like some like aggressive ass like passive aggressive. So he started the domino. <laughs> Could uh, no, I think Messi originally was like I don't want to be here, and Coleman was like, well, look, if you don't, don't want to be here, that's whatever. Like he said some like passive aggressive thing, and Messi was like, all right, fine, fuck, I'm leaving. <laughs> I see. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. 
All right. Well. So let's let's just quickly kind of run through the top dogs here. Yeah. Uh, we touched on French League, right? PSG. Poos. I'm not sure Lille is going to – I don't think they're going to finish in the top spot. Uh, I do see Lyon doing a little bit better, although they did just lose Depay. There's this young dude. His name is Cherky. C-H-E-R-K-I. Beef Cherky. Cherky. Uh, I've actually got an auction. I've, I've got timed. I might have to buy him tonight. Uh-oh. Uh, but keep an eye on him. Um, Germany, I out. think Bayern and Dortmund are going to kill it per use. Italy, Milan are back in it. I have no idea what to expect from Milan. You know something? Uh, throw this out there, just a last little little tidbit about uh, yeah. Bundesliga. All right. If Dortmund somehow finally win the league, mm-hmm. then Holland's gone. Ooh. Right? Yeah, he's done his job. That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Hey. So that kind of sucks. But I'd like it's to see like, it It's like LeBron with Cleveland, right? Right. I did my thing. I got you a trophy. I'm right. out. Right. I just just don't go to Chelsea, dude. What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing with your life? You he's he's going to go. Wow, where would he go? I, I hope he doesn't go to Chelsea either. Man, I hope it doesn't go there. I know. Uh, there's so only let's, let's bring in the EPL. We forgot about one of the biggest news that got swept under the rug because of Messi. Jack Grealish. Yeah. From Aston Villa to Man City. $100 million deal. Way too much. Crazy. Way too if much. Jack Grealish is worth $100 <laughs> mil, I saw this on the internet. If Jack I'm at least Grealish worth 50, is yeah. worth $100 mil, how much is Foden worth? I think I'm at least worth 20. I'm at least worth 10. Yeah, I think I can if get twenty. He's, if he's if he's at a hundred, I'm gonna ask my boss. Although Grealish Grealish is a very special player, uh, he is. Um, he is very you know, look. Think about his success that he had on a team like Aston Villa. Also, he made he looked good. Think about the success he just had this Euro, right? Think Not, about would he have had the same ex- success if he was starting? Hundred percent. Because he came off the bench yeah. a lot in crucial times when they needed him and, and well. he delivered. Yeah. So. That also begs another question, right? Yeah. Would if he would he he have been the same player a whole ninety minutes? Yes. Think so? Absolutely. Yeah. You'll see. I'm telling you. If Pep lets him play, if Pep gives him ninety, he's just he's got one of those he's got that creative kind of twitch. Yeah. That you you don't need to coach, you don't need to worry about telling him. He can just make something out of nothing. I like him at CDM better than I do oh, up the field, man. Really? No, I really attacking. Do. Give him attacking. Create yeah. chances. Well, uh, well, if you noticed, a lot of times Southgate, but we can't ever pff, fuck Southgate. Uh, <laughs> we can't ever. It's coming home. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's going to Rome. It's going to Rome. Um, if you notice, he kind of had him and uh, Rice, Declan Rice. No, 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 no. Remember? No, they didn't. They had him at, at the was, back. Uh, no, it was Phillips. Phillips and Rice. Oh, Phillips and Rice. Phillips. But but when he Grealish subbed off. was subbing in on the wings, I promise you. Oh, okay, okay. He's yeah, subbing yeah, in no. on the wings. You're right. You're right. I think you're confusing Phillips and and uh, Grealish. I, I am. I am. Yep. 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 But I still, coming on late in the game in the wings. I'm gonna be honest. Wing is one of the most difficult positions to create from. Yeah. It's just difficult because you have this amount of space to work with. Well, you you have a lot of space on the wings, but once you get closer to the goal, you then have you're, yeah. It's your you just get squeezed in. You get trapped. Yep. So it's then you're to forced trapped. to pass the ball away. If you get a little too excited, you're going to get trapped in a corner. Right. You know? Exactly. And then when you get stuck in the corner, you pass the ball away. Now you're not making an assist or getting a goal. And you're off sides then. Right. It's a whole lot of stupid shit. It's just shit. wasting time in the corner. Yeah. So, so Griezmann, here's the thing. Uh, hot take for you. Grealish. Grie- Griezmann. What did I say? Griezmann? Grie- Griezmann. It's okay. Grealish, Griezmann, Jesus. As of right now, they're the same person. So they, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, they're not. Grealish <laughs> or Sterling? Who do you start? Uh, same position. Shit. If I'm. Or do you start both? If I'm looking at, like, present, like right now, mm-hmm. then I'll go Sterling. Ooh! But. Because of the Euros. Right. All but right. If I'm looking at, like, past shit, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Grealish. Because Sterling, as we know, can do all those sexy things for you about 99% of the time. <laughs> until the big game. Until it comes down to scoring a goal. By the way, did right I call it? Goal. Did I not call it? He Be- fucked. He before fucked. the Euro started, I said if Sterling is in the starting 11 for England, they will not win. And here's the lineup for England. 
Sterling starting on the left side. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, Saka almost came through with that winner, though. Yeah. I Thank mean, God for Chiellini. <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's, <laughs> I guess it was that curse, you know. It was the curse of having too many good people, mm. uh, too you many know, good players. You know what else it is? And I just saw a video on this. Yeah, what you got? English fans are so club over country. Oh, yeah. That if Kane would have scored the final goal... There are fans out there that would have not cheered. Yeah. Until that is fixed, England will never win a World Cup or a Euro. The Ever. S- the Stevie G book. Ever. Remember the Stevie G book I told you about? Yeah. It? That was like a whole chapter. It's about insane. He's like, I'm here to fucking it's collect, insane. collect information. It's fucking insane. On the guys that I'm going to see nine times out of ten yeah. instead of, oh, I'm here to play like, what, fucking six games with you, seven games with you. Uh, so, fuck that. Yeah. Like. What pays my bills? What pays my bills? England? <sighs> no, nah, Liverpool pays my bills. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I want to see what Dave Beckham's up to. Yeah? I'm yeah. going to take notes. I'm going to go home. It's it. You know what it might take? It might take a coach like um, Valverde for Spain, where he just excluded all of Real Madrid. It might take that uh, someone being that drastic and just removing a bunch of players. Yeah. Because there is such a... A collision in the locker room to then England going, oh, fuck, we actually need all of the best players, or that might working out. That might work out my, for them. My word, yeah. One or the other, I think it's a, it's a worthwhile experiment because you've got enough players in England that are world class. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's just never uh, – you've mentioned it before with Brazilians who go to England and stuff. I just don't think, like, the, the nationality, like, the rah-rah factor is there. For, it's not. For them at all. And, oh, and my God. I don't blame them. No. Why would you be excited to fucking – Cool, London. You know? Cool, London. All right. Cool, London. It's not like, oh, cool, I'm, I'm from fucking Rome. I'm from fucking Venice. I'm from fucking, you, you know. You saw how passionate they were singing the national anthem? Dude, that's, that's all you needed to see. To, to, that's literally yeah. all you need to see. You're like, that whole team is very cohesive. The chemistry is high. They're bonding. England, on the other hand, it's like straight faces. They're not really singing. You kind of see like a... Like, one guy, like, mouthing it, and you're like, they're not going to win. I'll even say USA is even better than that because, yeah. hey, we don't really have the club side of things at all. So, I no. mean, it's... That's all we got. Right. That's all we got. Right. So, I don't know what... Like you said, it, it's going to take something really, I don't know, drastic. strange and weird Very to change drastic. that, yeah. that mindset. I don't know. I think you bring in a shitload of younger players, <whistles> and you say, fuck all the guys that you have now. I think that's... that You, you bring in guys who haven't had the club experience... But, hey, you're also throwing away a shitload of talent, right? Yeah. It's, it still goes back to the fans. Right. You yeah. got these fans that are so stubborn. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, this guy literally asked him. It was a Tottenham fan and an Arsenal fan. And the Tottenham fan said, if Harry, if Harry Kane scored the winning goal oh, in it. the Euro final, would you celebrate? And he was like, no. He's like, are you serious? Like, why not? He's like, yeah. And then he actually dropped a name who I had no idea. And he said, he said, oh, well, let's say this player scores. Blah, blah, blah. Score. Would, you, would you celebrate? And the guy paused. He was like, uh, uh, uh. He's like, see? Mm. See? You wouldn't celebrate if he scored. He's like, that's different. He's like, how is it different? It's not different. And it's, it's just, it's that fact right there. Club over country in England. It's so pathetic. Yeah, it's, it's so terrible. pathetic. And you know what it might take? It might take England's best player coming out in the media and speaking vocally about this yeah. division among clubs in the English locker room. Get the fucking queen out there. <laughs> ah, fuck her. <laughs> we all fucked her. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Let's move on. You want to do some Olympics? What's, well, Oh wait. Ooh, quickly want to touch on Champions League right now. What We're going say, through yeah, some it. qualifiers. Right now, we've got, uh, what is this? About Sparta. Uh, this is Sparta. 14 dude. teams. We've got yeah. 14 teams right now quali- trying to qualify for those remaining spots in Champions League. I'm just going to quickly touch on who they are, what's the scores, the legs, and then we're going to go into Olympics. Right now we've got Sparta Praha. Remember them? Uh-huh, Praha. Their uh, first leg, they lost to Monaco 2-0. Uh, we've also got Malmo against the Rangers. Right now Malmo are up 2-1. Booty said that was a crazy game. Finished with a 95th-minute goal for the Rangers. Yes. Very, very crucial goal for them. We've also got Gank. Getting ganked, getting ganked versus Brazil University Shakhtar Donsk, who, by the way, have a new coach who was the previous coach of Sassuolo, Icherby. Oh, oh, not Icherby. What's his name? Uh, Deserba. Deserbi. 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 I've been uh, checking some of their highlights. This team is 
very connected. There's a lot of Brazilians on this team. I went through the roster. Uh, PSV? No, no. Uh, or, uh, Shakhtar. Shakhtar, Shakhtar Duns. Yeah. Per, per usual with the Brazilians. But I think this Italian coach is doing a really good job. Go figure, right? The Italians are good at building chemistry on a team. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. like you go figure. We've also got PSV just dominated uh, Big Titty Land. I mean, Big Titty Land. Big Land is back. They're back. They're fighting. Woo! PSV looked very strong. There's a young striker. His name is uh, uh, Madueke. He's a 18, 19 year old English uh, winger slash forward. He is going to be the next big name. Keep an eye on him. Now, I would assume he's now taking Malin's spot. Yeah, Malin was um, was he on PS? Yeah, yes, PSV, yeah, yes, to, you're right. So yeah, yeah he's going to get some so Malin. Malin went to Dortmund. Great call. Yep. So Maduweke has now filled that spot. So then, keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. PSV are now back in it as far as like big dogs. They're back. Very excited to see them. We've also got CFR Cluj. Uh, against the young boys, really hoping the young boys are back. We saw them a couple years ago. I love me a young boy. It is, <laughs> it is one one. Uh, we've also got Kravena Sved- Sveda, Svezeda. Uh, we still can't say oh, that man. name. I even had this a Serbian who told me how to pronounce this. Uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. <sighs> Kravena Svezeda. Svezda. 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 Kravena Svezda. Man, shout out to Marco. They are tied 1-1 to Sheriff. I don't know where they are. And the final match we've got is Olympiacos versus Ludogrets. For those who don't know Ludogrets, Ozil scored his best goal ever oh. against Ludogrets. <laughs> if you type in Ozil best goal, it's against Ludogrets. Check there. it out. It's like the Pogba um, one I was saying. But don't care who wins that one. Olympiacos always seems to find their way back in the Champions yeah, League. And then... Will. Make it into the Euros or the Europa League. I was so. going to say, and then get your ass kicked. And then they, they can't make it out the group stage, and they wind up in the Europa League. Baklova for everyone. It's, <laughs> it's going to happen. So that'll uh, that'll do it for the qualifying of Champions League. I'll pass it over to you for Olympics. I uh, need to shout out to the ladies, uh, U.S. ladies. Uh, what? Dude, what happened? Apparently, shout out. Yeah. Like, oh, it's going to be a shout out, all right. <laughs> Uh, they apparently thought they were taking a vacation on a business trip. What the fuck? It's so terrible. At least they got a bronze. The, the reason that you can, the, the way you can actually like tell that was the exact case is because you lost three to nothing in the opening fucking game. So like, oh, where yeah. was your mind? Where's your mind? I know new coach, right? New coach, but that's inexcusable, man. Hot take. I got a hot take for you. Carly Lloyd is way better than Megan Rapino. Agree. Everyone Agreed. looks to Megan Rapino because she's the, the 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 like bright. She's so loud. She's got all these opinions. In my opinion, she's not that good. Carly Lloyd won us that World Cup. You remember she scored the fucking like hat trick and then hit the midfield goal. Me you Carly that? Lloyd. I would rather Carly Lloyd. Here, I'm gonna agree with you because I, I, dude, they they fucking subbed her in on the bronze medal game. She killed it. She absolutely killed it. They, they subbed him in the fucking bronze medal. I game. don't under. She's got the ten jersey. She is so influential. She scores goals. She works so much harder. She's she's not this. I love what Zlatan said about LeBron. He said, "You're a professional athlete, not a politician." Like I understand you have this platform, but and and like use your platform b- exactly. for good, but don't pretend like you're a politician. You're a professional athlete. Yeah. You haven't gone to school. You haven't got a, a political degree. You haven't got a, a poli sci deg- degree. You, you you don't spend time in this arena. Don't S- yeah. Speak about what you're good at. Exactly. Carly Lloyd. She keeps her head down. She works hard. Scores goals. She scored four goals in a World <laughs> Cup final. <laughs> right. What more do you need to know? What do you need to know, dude? God man. And hey, just to reiterate, so glad she got us that bronze medal. Props it, to her. And, and props and to her. We at least deserved that medal. Even if y'all did, y'all wanted to show up and fuck fuck yeah. off. But I think we need to move on from the Rapino era. Of course, of course. Let's talk about some actual Olympics here. Yeah. Um, hey, let's talk about some some good shit. I was watching some ping pong today. <laughs> Table tennis. Table tennis. It's not ping pong in the Olympics. That's right. I always thought tennis. You actually had to move, <laughs> but you, know, you just move your arms with that. It was great. Yeah. It was fucking great. They're impressive. Um. What's another thing that really f- just stuck out to me? Uh, the track and field has been absurd awesome. lately. Yeah. Shout but out to the Italians, fastest man in the world. Shout out to the decathlon motherfuckers because yeah. y'all are like of not of this earth. I was telling Hugh earlier. Super athletes. Ten events. You can't be good at eight of them. You can't be good at nine of them. 
You have to be like obses- exceptional at fucking ten of them. world class, world fucking class, amazing, dude. Men and ladies. Who won the uh, decathlon? Oh For my the- god, I'm gonna tell you right now. Hold on. Another thing that I really like about track is the uh, I love the triple jump, I love the long jump, I love the high jump. I don't know why I just love the jumping track and field events. I yep. feel like. Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, and the pole vault, another jump. The pole vault's a fun right? one. The pole vault is another really just fun one. Yep. The javelin, I saw somebody broke the uh, the records for javelin, almost yep. hit the camera guy. That was pretty cool. Yep. Uh, looking at the the uh, hammer throw, I didn't see that, but oh, this, the minute I saw it, dude, I remember this guy from Canada, he's a fucking absolute animal. He's a beast. Uh, his name's Warner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damian Warner. Yeah. Dude, you know, they replay, like, all the events he's doing, like his javelin throw. I was about to go jack off to it <laughs> before I saw him run the fifteen hundred. You know, like dude, it, it it's absurd. It's absurd. Go check him out. Uh, American didn't uh, medal in that one. It's all right. Can't win them all. No, you can't. I also want to shout out homeboy, uh, the men's uh, four hundred hurdles. Oh, your boy from Norway. That was insane. Oh, my God, I saw dude. that. He broke a record. He broke his own record. He broke his own record. Uh, American got second place. Yeah. He right? was bummed. He broke his own record as well. Imagine. Okay. <laughs> Imagine he ran, that. He ran the 400-meter hurdles. Yeah. In, in I think it was uh, 40. It, no, it was like 50 seconds or like something like that. So imagine running that and you get second. Homeboy, in the meantime, ran like a 49.9 or something ridiculous like that. Like, people will run that. People will run that. Hold on. Women? Men? 45.94. People run that without the fucking yeah. hurdles. See, he could beat me in a 400 with Jesus that time. Jesus Christ. That's insane. I don't think I could run a 400 in uh, 46 seconds. And then our boy gets it in 46. 17. One. Yeah. I mean, dude, people do that. He was bummed. He was yeah. bummed. He he beat his own record at the 400 <laughs> hurdles, and he finishes the race, and he's just like, like man, I, do, I ran. I know. It's like I ran my fastest time I've ever run, and I still lost. That's, dude, I'm still not over it. I've watched that race twice. You know what I'm really excited for in the Olympics? What you got? Brazil, Spain. Brazil, oh. Spain tomorrow. Tomorrow, soccer. Very early. Woo. Shout out to Mexico won the bronze today, actually. Did they? Fuck Mexico. Fuck L tree. Hey, man. Props S- to them. Stacking up them the high. L's. I had them high. Yep. Stacking up the L's against U.S., though. That's why uh, L tree. Uh-oh. I got my timer. There's an auction getting ready to go on. So uh-oh. uh-oh, let's uh-oh. Go we go, wrap you want to wrap this up? Yeah. Wrap it up? Uh, we've got Spain, Brazil. Yep. Uh, gold medal final in soccer. Yep. We've Men's also basketball. got men's basketball. Gold medal final. Gold I don't know who they final. play. That's a good question. Play. I'll look it up. We've also got Brazil, USA, women's volleyball. Oh, yeah. That's tomorrow night at 11.30. Ladies, you said? Yeah. Yeah, women's. Beach ladies. beach or indoor? Indoor. Oh, this God, dude. Oh, God, dude. Yeah, th- dude. I was watching the Brazil ladies today. Jesus. That's going to be a fucking showdown. That's going to be a fucking showdown. They won the last one in Rio, by the way. They were very that. proud of that. I believe that. Because, I mean, outside of the U.S. volleyball ladies, I'm like, mm, volleyball. Uh, Brazil? Beach or indoor? Doesn't matter. Oh, it's going on right now. Oh, it's happening right France now. France versus U.S., third quarter, 45-56, U.S. Whoa. are up. We might have to stop this broadcast now and go Whoa. watch it. Whoa. All right, we're giving our oh, shout-outs. It's totally on the TV right now. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's wrap this episode up. All right, let's do it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Go uh, ahead, you. Uh, on the spot, on the spot. Uh, shout out to Messi for taking on New Frontiers. Very excited to see you at PSG. I honestly wish him the best. I want to see this GOAT conversation go on for longer. I've been having so many of my friends say, oh, go to the MLS. I'm like, if he goes to the MLS, he, uh, he instantly loses the GOAT debate. He can do that instantly. when he's 50. That's what I'm saying. So he's 33. Though. We're not done yet. They're not done yet. Messi. No. I want to see a new invigorated Messi here. Flip the switch. Flip it. Light the fire. Go ham. Go ham. Ronaldo, do the same under Allegri. Booty, shout out. Uh, ooh, I, ooh, I had such a good shout out earlier, and I fucked up and lost it. Come back, come back. Shout out to Roger Waters for giving us the intro today. Boom. Tons of drugs. 
<laughs> Couldn't have done it without drugs. Shout out to you, Roger. If you haven't seen The Wall, you should see it. You should see it sober and then go back and watch it non-sober. Uh, it's uh, it's quite a journey. It's quite a journey. It's a mental journey and a physical journey for everyone out there. Uh, and also, I got I got the Bible. <laughs> we're going to go <laughs> open book. our prayer books right quick. Oh, God. What country did I open to? Russia. Oh, one of my faves. One of my faves. Pretty ladies. Pretty ladies. A fanati, which means fanatics. Fanati were hardcore Russian fans whose emergence could be traced back to the Moscow football scene of the early 1970s. They owed their moniker to the vast distances that they were obliged to travel as they crisscrossed the Soviet Union in support of their teams. The Fanati. Nice, Fanati. I, maybe that's where fanatics... Yeah, I, would, huh? I would be willing to bet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick on this page with you. Shout out to Putin. Keep feeding him steroids. This is a, uh, a glore. A glory hunter, a supporter who switches allegiance to the most successful team of the moment. It's called a glore. Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> While a fan who comes to a game and doesn't get involved in the chanting is dismissively known as a Kuzmich, played by actor Victor, flipping the page, uh, Baishkov. Kuzmich was a peace loving forest ranger who first appeared in the 19. 19- Blah, blah, blah. So, a See, glore. That's what I like about Russians. They don't, play, they don't play that fucking shit. They don't play it. You're a plastic. Like, you didn't come here to just watch. Yeah, plastic fan. I love it. Love it. Well, shout out to Putin. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Nova Acai. If you need some Acai, you should get some. I meant to ask you to bring me some. I forgot. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. I've been out for a hot second. Uh, ooh, ah. Follow us on the Insta, the Twitter, the Twitter. Everybody, do it. If you are at listening footy to us. Fetish show. At Footy Fetish Show. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, I got nothing left for you. Thank everybody for listening. We were recording tonight from my back porch right, of my new home. Thank you. New I home. appreciate it. New move. If you hear a little noise in the background, that was my air conditioner. But it probably was your feet touching your balls. <laughs> Don't lie to yourself. It's been the Footy Fetish Show where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer. Peace out, Boy Scouts.